right. This is a fun and exciting day because we just recently announced a first for the state of Kansas and JAG-K is part of this big announcement. Uh, before we talk a little bit more about that, I would like to welcome our Senior Vice President of Programming, Bev Mortimer. Good morning, Bev. Good morning, Chuck. It's great to be here. An exciting yes. week we've had. Yes. Did you bring your coffee? But I don't have my JAG K. I, I do. Oh. Yeah, I do. Okay. I just okay. I didn't bring the right cup today. Well, that's okay. That's okay. So I want to go back to 2017. We actually, you and I both started August 1st, 2016. And we were still kind of getting the feel for everything. You were actually very familiar with it as a former member of the JAG K Board of Directors. Um, but when we came in together, we both attended the National Training Seminar together in July before we officially started and started getting some ideas. And, and you know, in your background as an educator and superintendent of schools, obviously you knew a lot about what was happening in the education field and career and technical education. So you brought that to JAG K. But we started talking about something called youth registered apprenticeships. And this was happening in some other states, but um, we had a big announcement about youth registered apprenticeships this week. And uh, before we, we talk about the specifics, can you tell me kind of the history from your standpoint of when this all started within JAG K? You may have been doing some things or exposed to it prior to coming to JAG K. But in the context of JAG K, kind of bring us along on this journey and uh, how, we, how we got to where we are. We'll talk a little bit about the announcement and then also discuss kind of the way forward. Well, I, to tell you, you know, that first year um, spent most of our time, I think we added some programs in that first year. So we were, we were both getting settled in and, and learning the ins and outs of, of the JAG model as it was to be implemented and learning about how it was run in Kansas. But, you know, it really didn't take us too long. Um, overall, the program was strong, solid. Um, and we, you know, with our uh, continuous improvement mindset, you know, always looking for how can we improve or how can we do better. And a couple of things kind of popped out that, um, maybe we were missing pieces to the puzzle of JAG K or just the JAG model in general. And um, those started with, you know, our students that are system um, involved youth, which, you know, at the time we started talking about students in foster care that our JAG model did not serve them well because of the high mobility. And so as we talked about, well, what's the solution? How can JAG, and JAG-K especially serve, uh, do a better job of serving kids in foster care. Um, th this is where apprenticeships kind of surface. Um, the idea at the time being uh, that, that our, our students in foster care change schools often and they don't really find their way into career and tech ed courses because if you just, you know, if you change schools three or four times in a school year, you don't have that continuity and you've missed out on some things prior to that. So one of the pieces, and I think it was early in 2017, because, um, you know, being partners with our, with our local schools, we, we need to be aligned and we need to make sure the State Department of Education um, is at least aware of the ideas we're talking, we have to have their support. Uh, so I started to talk to Dr. Watson at the time because we had had prior history being involved with the innovative schools and just as superintendents, but I approached him even with the idea before we went too far down that path about, about apprenticeships or what, what would it look like in Kansas schools if students enrolled in the core basic classes they needed, but that JAG K was able to set up um, some authentic work-based learning experiences for them as part of their plan of study. 
Uh, schools are required to do the individual plans of study. JAG-K has the individual development plan. So we're already aligned in that way. We're already focused on that work-based learning and getting kids on that successful career path. So what if we look at something that's not traditional, which traditional education being um, a series of courses you enroll in and you take at the school, what are some other ways we can better meet the needs of the kids? So it really kind of surfaced and, and apprenticeships, quite honestly, had been part of the JAG model, I'm sure since the beginning. Um, I don't have the original handbooks, but uh, one of the handbooks I looked at was from 2005. Apprenticeships have always been in there. We just didn't have that available in the state of Kansas. Um, there were adult apprenticeships, but nobody had ever done the youth side or starting at age 16, uh, preparing kids. So it really started in 2017. And in, in the fall of 2017 was when I first went to, to Dr. Watson and he was you know very supportive and very intrigued by the idea and basically said, why don't you guys do it? Why don't you see how we can do that? So we evolved with our transitions program. Um, and at the same time, tried to work and get the youth apprenticeships um, going. So I, I don't know, I've got lots of pages of timeline between 2017 and today with all of the people that were involved, all the agencies that were involved, all the businesses were involved because quite honestly in our position with JAG-K, we have lots of employer partners out there that are struggling to fill their positions and want a qualified workforce well, apprenticeship seems like a natural fit. It is another tool in our toolbox uh, as an opportunity to allow our students. Um, so <laughs> transitions program uh, where we serve students in foster care and now uh, we may talk about it, but expanding in um, you know, with juvenile offenders that we're gonna talk about. Um, the transition side moved faster. The youth apprenticeship side was a slow moving process. But as you said, the announcement this week, which is fitting, it is National Apprenticeship Week. Um, the pieces have fallen together, or you could say the stars have aligned and we were able to um, be a part of the announcement and then uh, that first youth registered apprenticeship in the state of Kansas. So, and as you alluded to, a lot had to happen for the stars to align. I mean, we had to push some of the stars and uh, there was a lot of research involved. Uh, let's talk about the announcement and then kind of go back a little bit into how all these moving pieces came together. It, it was announced this week, there was a joint press release sent out by the Kansas State Department of Education and the State Department of Commerce uh, and at, at the Secretary of Commerce is actually also the Lieutenant Governor, uh, David Toland. So they sent out an announcement about the first ever youth registered apprenticeship in the state of Kansas. And JAG K is the sponsor of this first youth registered apprenticeship. So big deal, historic, and we are part of it, but that didn't just happen. As, as you mentioned, you had spoken with Randy Watson, the state education commissioner back in 2017 about this. So it took a while to get to this point, multiple agencies, um, but, but we also shout out to our friends at IJAG or Iowa JAG, Lori Phelan, uh, the, the president and CEO there, um, they've done, They've done a lot of work in this area. Um, but Bev, you also traveled outside the state uh, in 2018, I think, doing research on this. So, so all of this work culminated this week, but can you tell us a little bit about some of the moving pieces and the research that you did uh, and why it's important that we did it for the students in Jack K? Okay, you know, like I said, there were a lot of a lot of people involved in this from the beginning, and you know, uh, my education background and looking at at JAG K at what we did and with what the state and some of their initiatives were, and trying to make sure that we were aligned uh, because we're we're only as as effective 
as we work or our collaboration with our partner schools. We, we, we never strive to put a JAGK program in a school that's going a different direction than, than the schools. Um, and I, I think one of the other big initiatives that the state was doing at the time that I wanted to, admit, to mention that we've heard a lot about over the last few years is their whole redesign project. And if you read about that and why they initially started it, it had a lot to do with our, our students entering uh, the workforce or leaving public education that didn't have good, uh, you know, as they call them, soft skills to go into the workforce and into the workplace. And, you know, that really caught my attention too, because that's exactly what we do. We fill that void. Um, and so I, I would put the, the plug in right here that we hear over and over from our students, from our specialists and some of our member schools that we should have JAGK programs in every school uh, because that's our expertise area. That's, our, that's where we specialize. And where I said, you know, there are challenges in changing a master schedule to work classes yeah. in, um, we're there. We, we are in the position where we can fill that void and um, we have all the data, of course, to support that. So um, I need I need to plug into power here. Apparently I, I don't, I'm gonna go. Okay. Well, I know one of the things that you did was travel to Colorado uh, to visit with experts on apprenticeships, but I, I, I can't remember if it was commerce or education that that was also at that seminar. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that helped this process? I, I can. Um, so, you know, I, I talked a lot about the education side and at least getting permission in the state of Kansas to pursue something because we weren't gonna go anywhere if we didn't have that interest from the education side because the apprenticeships really are all about education, um, meeting business, and so, Jack K, when you said earlier, we're the sponsor, we're the ones who get the kids ready and, and match the kids from education to that authentic work experience, which could be an apprenticeship. But, um, you know, when I said, uh, so the State Department of Education, not only Dr. Watson, Natalie Clark was also one of the key people early on um, in her role over there that kept me informed, that was one of my go-to people. And she also was one of the people who attended, uh, it's called CareerWise, it's a CareerWise model in the state of Colorado, um, where it was driven by business, um, not education. And so KSDE sent Natalie out there with me. We also had um, Scott Smathers, who, um, I'm trying to think, he represented several different agencies at the time, one of those being Board of Regents. Um, we had that conversation. And basically, we left that um, training. It was actually, it was called a site visit. We got to go out and see high school students in their internship positions. And we walked away with, why aren't we doing this in Kansas? Because um, we, we just saw some great examples. Sometimes we underestimate what our high school kids can do. And it was a perfect example and a perfect way to get us fired up. But um, uh, so I had, you know, we, we worked with Brad at the State Department of Education uh, the last couple of years. Stacy Smith has been very instrumental in getting us to this point with, with our apprenticeship opportunity that's coming up. We've worked with the Department of Commerce. We've worked with several people out of that department. Uh, there was one time that we were even working with Diane DeBacker through commerce because of a new a new division you know that she was overseeing um we worked i jag i think it was december of 2017 you said bev go to i jag go to Lori phelan you know they've got this apprentice thing down and so let's see how they got started learn from them and so yeah they were key for us um although the one quote i remember them saying is oh it's easy it's easy and so here we are what is it, five years later? We're there now, we're there, but it took us a little time. So there were a lot of other models in other states we looked at, Kentucky, Washington, uh, Wisconsin, you know, just a lot of other models to, to figure out who are all the players and how do we go about doing this and how do we do it right and we do, do a quality job. Um, I also remember um, several years, probably in the beginning, 
we reached out to Phyllis Lachelle at Kansas Works and she connected us. Uh, one of the first meetings I had was Gary Westerman in Junction City. And then I eventually met with Chastity Troxel, um, who really has played a, a key role in getting this thing going also. Uh, but I think there were about two other people um, through those channels and, and at those agencies that we work with over time. Um, but I also have to tell you, um, there were some people within JAG that also inspired and supported us to continue to move in this direction. You know, Connor Phillips, our director of programming, sits on a youth committee in southeast Kansas, and he heard presentations and he shared what we do as JAG-K. I think Crossland Construction came through that one. Uh, the Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, you know, they were looking for apprenticeship opportunities. Um, I think there was even a third business. Because in 2018, our people started to say, hey, the people in agribusiness want to know about apprenticeships. Can we do those? The people in healthcare, they want to know how we can do apprenticeships. So we had the business people supporting it. We had education people supporting it. We had commerce supporting it. I think we went through, we've gone through three governors and we've gone through maybe three um, DCF secretaries. Uh, where where everybody we talked to was supportive, but that piece of let, let's roll up our sleeves now, how do we make that happen? Um, you know, didn't all come together until this year. So, um, you know, those 2017, 2018, you know, 2019, it just kind of kept progressing. It stayed on the burner, simmering a little bit um, as as business people out in the communities that we connected with said. What can you do? And I, I'll tell you, the pandemic, I think, magnified all of that. It it made people say we need workers worse than we did before. And so knowing that this is a process where we can put youth before they graduate from high school into the workplace, then the business are also key in training the, the students with those skills so that when they graduate, when they turn 18, they can enter the adult apprenticeship um, and it you know i think the biggest hurdle we have in kansas is that people still equate the mindset is that people still think the path to a successful future has to be college has to be college and i think we have to get past that and we have to look at other other pathways to success because that is not the only one and i think we're starting to recognize that um, Plus, the apprenticeship may include college it, it courses. It may include certifications. It may include degrees that are earned along the way. But one of the big differences is that you go the, the apprenticeship route. You do not have debt for coursework that you pay when you just go directly you know, through a college um, a career, a college pathway. So um, those, those were, I mean, as we talk about it, we're trying to open up all of the pathways we can for success for our students because no one size fits all. So we wanna give them everything we can that's out there. So let's talk a little bit about specifics for this first one. It is in Topeka. It's actually an IT, IT support, support position. position. You will be trained and working for the Kansas State Department of Education. It's not, it's not an education position. It's to be trained how to do IT support. Can you tell us a little bit more about the requirements of this specific youth registered apprenticeship and then generally what this might look like in another field? So we're talking about IT support, but it could be, and you mentioned some of these other areas, it could be healthcare uh, eventually. This, this will open up way beyond IT support, but our first opportunity is in partnership with USD 501 or Topeka Public Schools. So any high school student in USD 501, uh, has the opportunity to apply for this position, which will start in January. But can you tell us a little bit more about the process? And again, this is new. You have worked a long time on some of the 
the paperwork with with the agencies. But what else can you tell us about this specific one, how it will expand over time? And I think you've mentioned why this is valuable to our students, but maybe you could even, if there are some other thoughts you have on, on the great benefit for our JAG-K students, that would be great. Well, um, in about two weeks, I can tell you a lot more about it, but it, because we still have some details that have to be, um, and, and processes that we have never done before, but at, at, it is available, this particular apprenticeship um, the State Department of Education decided it was important enough to them that they would step up and they would be the very first employer to make this happen. So they, uh, you know, that we, we know that uh, cybersecurity uh, te technology related careers and positions are in high demand. So they chose that area um, to be the one. And so what, what's been developed uh, mostly by them and, and Department of Commerce checking off on it, where a list of competencies, because this is a competency-based program where kids learn skills and we verify that they learn those skills on the job. But the students will apply just like they would for any other job. They will be interviewed by a team that includes State Department of Ed and us. And every day or whatever the, the work schedule is during the week, they will leave school um, and go to work just like any other job. They will dress for the work. Um, well, I don't know, back up. I mean, they have to apply with a resume, the cover letter. They have to go through the interview process. And all of those things are things we already do with Jag K. So I feel really good about, I'm confident about, I know that part. And I know how we've gotten the kids prepared for this. But once that person is selected and hired, work out the, the hours of work, um, and it is, like I said, it's paid and there will be a lot of mentoring that goes on. Um, they'll be supervised by people at the State Department of Education in the IT department, because I think, it, you know, again, I can't emphasize it enough. The, this apprentice is not going to sit and watch other people do their job. This apprentice is going to learn how to do the job. And I, I look forward, I, I'm excited for the day where that apprentice is the one giving KSDE feedback on some of their application, their web applications, providing some help desk support for schools who call in and say, I need help with this web-based application, providing training for um, KSDE staff and perhaps other school staff. So it, it, there's really not a limit on what the student will be able to do. Um, but it's authentic, it's real work. It's not watching somebody else. It's not moving around, learning about what the work is. They are doing the work. So we will get the, the apprentice hired. And then shortly you know, after the first of the year, January, they will go to work um, a couple hours a day. And, I, and again, that depends on the student and their class schedule, extracurricular schedule. But the other opportunity then, because there is a minimum number of hours, and I, I don't have that right in front of me, um, a minimum number of hours to complete the apprenticeship, the, the youth apprenticeship side of this. So the, the student has the opportunity to move right into the summer and continue even into full-time work in the summer when they're not in school. And so I think we're, we're looking at somebody in their junior year of high school. So that, that gives them the time to complete and learn all of the, the competencies that are part of the program. Upon graduation from high school, then as I said, they have the opportunity to go right into uh, an adult apprenticeship in a related field, um, or they may choose to go to college or technical school, uh, but there, there are other options for them. Um, one of the, the keys to apprentice or youth apprenticeships there has to be an adult apprenticeship in place. So that's where we had to start. We had to make sure um, there, was, there were technology related adult apprenticeships and then backed off of that saying, here's what you have to do as a youth apprentice to be ready to enter that, that adult apprenticeship. Got it. And I may have misled a little bit. These are JAG K high school students in Topeka. So we basically have a corner on the market 
So um, if you're one of our JAG-K students at Topeka High, Topeka West, or Highland Park High School, you are the only ones that can apply for this first in the state youth registered apprenticeship program. So it's a huge deal. Um, by virtue of being a member of the JAG-K program, you really get access to this unique opportunity. And so it's, uh, it's a real feather in our cap, frankly, that the agencies, especially the Department of Education, thought as highly as they do of JAG-K to include us in this first ever opportunity. So as you mentioned, this is the first one here, but we have a number of industries where there could already be adult apprenticeships established. And that's what we will do. And going forward, we still have a lot of details to work out. Uh, this is the beginning, but we have um, Kim Furtick, who is our Director of Employer Engagement. And so Kim will be responsible for making connections. Once we have established where the adult apprenticeships are, then we're going to try to create more youth registered apprenticeship opportunities throughout the state. And then at that point, it's going to be managed from the local level. So even in Topeka, even though this, this started um, and it's kind of a statewide announcement, whichever student gets this position, the, there's going to be follow-up and support by their specialist, just like there would be in any job opportunity or, or work-based learning experience. So this isn't a departure from the model. And as Bev indicated, apprenticeships have been part of the JAG model for a long time. It's just the first time we've been able to do it in this way in Kansas. So it's really exciting for us as an organization, certainly for the state of Kansas. And I just couldn't be more pleased and proud of our team for, for getting this done. And Bev, you, you've been working on it from the beginning. So it's nice, I'm sure, from your perspective to actually be able to, we can't fully check the box because we still have work to do, but this is a major milestone. Yeah, it, it really is. And I, you know, you said looking forward, um, and what happens next, you know, we've already started some conversation about where do we go from here. Uh, obviously, one of the big things we need to do is to really train and make sure all of our JAG case specialists, you know, all 79 plus our pilots um, understand what this is and how the opportunity works because um, all of them, are, they are the people who have the direct contact with the students. They are the people helping students do their career exploration and their different levels of employer engagement in our model. And it will be them, you know, who come forward and say, hey, I have a student who's really interested in this. Do we have an employer connection? And so I, you know, when I was talking about pieces falling together, I, I want to say 2019 when Kim joined us. Um, joined our team. And so that's another piece to this puzzle at coming in and being able to provide and really excel with apprenticeships and enhance what we do with our employers. You know, that's, that's going to be, uh, that's what Kim does. And so we're excited to have her, you know, Mark and strategic advancement. It, it's, it's a lot of people on the team. I know I mentioned Connor. We have other specialists who've done some really good internship opportunities. You know, I think that Joni Bolin, um, she's one I will never forget. She had, she had, you know, people always tell us that kids can't job shadow or can't work underage in a, in a hospital or healthcare field. And Joni Bolin said, oh, well, I didn't know that because I had eighth graders doing paid internships at, at Hutch, the hospital in Hutch, and they treated them just like the employees. They had to sign, you know, all the paperwork they had to do. And, and they got real work experience and they worked in the summer for $10 an hour as interns. And so, you know, when you got, we have the staff that we do and specialists and managers out there like that, who constantly push the barriers back and say, yes, we can, our kids can do this. You know, they're the people that keep inspiring you to keep moving forward. And we have lots of, I think there's a lot of, um, opportunities or relationships with employers that were on that edge that getting this started like I think I mentioned kicking the door down we're going to have people with ideas saying hey 
I have a student, I, I need a business, or can you help us with the business? So it'll take, you know, all of us working together to, to expand this, but um, again, it's just what we do and, and what all of these people in Jack K do is, is you know, fight back and, and tear down those barriers to making sure we can give our kids the best opportunities available out there. And we have a lot of great people working on that. Um, Definitely. Yeah, so I, I will, you know, we have agribusiness, agri, um, the financial industries and, and employers that we work with, healthcare that we work with. Um, it's just, I, I think I mentioned to a region two on a call just a little bit ago, um, even in education, you know, we, we talked about this is sponsored by that the employer sponsor is KSDE, our Department of Education. But out in Western Kansas, I think there are apprenticeship opportunities for people to become classroom teachers. If you are a para, you are a qualified paraprofessional, there are apprenticeship paths for you to go into education. So I thought, you know, coming from education, I better throw that one in. So I don't think there's anything off the table. I think there's an apprenticeship opportunity um, for, you know, adults or youth. So, um, you know, the sky's the limit here. It's just a matter of, of getting this started and, and um, matching students and employers and getting all the partners working together. And we're, we're, we're on the way. But, uh, yeah, we, we've worked a long time at it. Uh, but now I think the real work starts to get all those opportunities set up for kids. Sure. This is just another great example of, of collaboration and the value of a national network. Also, uh, with the JAG network, relying on some of our, our affiliate partners to, to give us guidance. And, um, you know, we'll take it from here and then hopefully we'll, we'll move it up another level and other affiliates will come to us asking how we did what we did. Um, so it's just a great example of how things can come together and how you need to persevere and be resilient and not give up. We've, we've got some other things that we've been working on for multiple years as well that haven't quite been landed yet. And we'll continue to work on those. Um, is there anything else? Because you're the the senior vice president of programming, which entails a lot. You mentioned our transition services. Obviously this one, you mentioned a, another exciting thing that we're doing. We're going to have a JAG K program in the Kansas Juvenile Correctional Complex High School, which is Lawrence Gardner High School. That's going to start in January. Uh, and then we're doing, we're working on rural models for JAG K. Is there anything else that that you can think of? I mean, I, we're working on some funding sources, and and uh, we just actually were approached this week about partnering with a huge national company to um, bid on something down the road, which is an exciting opportunity. Um, but Bev, can you think of some other things? You mentioned we're always trying to improve, but can you think of some other things that are going to benefit our students um, that we're working on right now? Um, like you said, there's always something in the works and you know the, the new program that'll be at the juvenile correctional complex. You know, that one has been ongoing for a couple of years also. So that that's kind of new territory for us. That position where again we're finalizing some details, hope to start that one. Right after the first of the year in January, um, and you know you, you you've said this before. It, it's um, who you know. Well, it, we've been talking about it for years, and sometimes for things to actually take place and happen, it's who you know. And one of our previous principals from one of our other programs happens to now be the principal out there, knew of our program, and so that has allowed the opportunity for us to start that JAG-K program in that facility. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and you talk about rural, you know, we're really, at some of the um, initiatives have, you know, not everything during the pandemic was, was bad. Um, it forced us to learn a lot more about remote teaching and learning, but it also shifted some of the talk or some of the emphasis or some of the spotlight onto more jobs, jobs for America's graduates, 
um, what are jobs that you can do remotely? And so that ties into the rural model that we've talked about and how to deliver JAG-K in more rural areas of the state. Um, so I got connected with and learned a little bit about some of the rural and remote uh, certifications and opportunities where people, uh, and this is specific to uh, Dane Hansen um, service area, but you know, a lot of people there, you listen to them talk about how they want to stay in their home communities, but the kind of jobs or careers they wanted aren't in those communities. And what they've discovered, and it's all been accelerated by the pandemic, is that there are, there are remote opportunities. You can work for a company out of Dallas, Texas from Atwood, Kansas, or you know, one of the other remote areas. So we're having some conversations about how can we start that? How can, because they want to keep their youth there. They want their youth to raise families back in those rural areas. So that, that one is going to be um, moving forward, you know, ongoing until we get to the, the place where we feel like we have a model or we have a solution to be able to bring JAG-K to more of the rural areas. Um, I was trying to think, there were, um, we've always got something going on, Chuck. <laughs> you know, oh, I, I know. I know. I know one of the things that I'm hoping we can do more of and virtual again has kind of opened up some of these ideas. Uh, I would like to implement a more extensive uh, sister program. So maybe a program in Western Kansas has some kind of a relationship with a program in Kansas City, Kansas. So geographically you're split and maybe you look different. Maybe one's a a rural program and one's a, a large city program, um, but you do some kind of a PDL together or just, you know, get to know each other through some kind of online games or whatever. But so we truly get this jag K family more together and not rely on statewide events because it's difficult to get everyone, nearly impossible to get everyone together in an in-person event um, because we're limited on space and, and the number of folks that can be there. So we're constantly looking for those types of opportunities. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to do a virtual job shadow, ask your specialist about that because we have a huge library of careers. This is a great way to, to do career exploration. Um, so ask about virtual job shadowing. If you haven't done that, we continue to expand the offerings there and all of our events. We want to improve, give greater access to. So we really want student input on all of these things to make our programs even better, our events even better. So when we talk about student voice and choice, we mean it. Reach out to us. While we're looking at developing new programs, new models, we also want to improve what we're currently doing. Uh, we're, we're looking at the middle school model. And Allie Fisher at Westridge Middle School is on our national task force to help um, evolve the middle school model. Uh, and then we could talk about National Career Development Conference and the National Career Association and, and all of these things that are happening. So we have a lot of irons in the fire. Um, I just want people to know that, that we're constantly trying to make things better and want your input on how we do that. Uh, I, I might add, after LDC, which was our first in-person event with students um, in a couple of years, it feels like a lot longer, uh, I mean, very popular and, and students always come back and say, we wish we had more time to interact with the other students or get to know other students. So the idea of the sister program, I think is a great idea and hopefully we can get that off the ground because they do want to get to know each other. Um, but I, I will add that we put out a survey um, to, that was, it was to the specialists, all specialists, and they were meant to give that to their students to get their input um, and their feedback. And it had four questions, you know, what was good, what was right about JAG-K, what, what was wrong with JAG-K, you know, what can we do better with? Um, the third question is what is missing, or might've been what is confusing, I may not have them in order. What's confusing about JAG-K and then what is missing in JAG-K? I think I got 89 responses back. So if you are students and you are listening and you would like 
to provide some feedback, let your specialist know, and I'll send that link back out to them because um, your state officers are headed to Washington, D.C., and this was a question that was asked of them by JAG National. How can we make JAG a better organization? So if nobody else answers, at least those 89 opinions and that feedback and your state officers are going to be going through and compiling that and then looking for things that they can share with national, but then looking for things they can share with Chuck and I and our teams about how we can make some improvements. And there's some really great suggestions. And by the way, it was a totally anonymous survey. So you don't even have to put your name on it. We really want to know how we can make JAG better for you. Um, so tell your specialists you'd like to get that link sent back out and we have a little time, we can, we, we'd be glad to have that. And so to uh, conclude today, uh, thank you, Bev, and also thank you, specialists. We, we mentioned you a couple of times, and we can never thank you enough. We know none of this gets done without our outstanding career specialists. So thank you. Uh, thanks to the rest of the team as well, our regional managers, our directors, and, and the executive team. So... Youth Registered Apprenticeships. It is real. It is happening. Stay tuned for more information and enjoy your coffee. Hey.